Let's see. Hey, hey, check two. Check two, check two. <laughs> That's coming. My name is Ian Martin Allison with SBL and today I am so excited. I've been wanting to make this video for ages. I am giving you the top 10 Muse bass lines by the incomparable Chris Wolstenholme. First, I'm running some light compression with the Origin FX Cali 76, then into these two three leaf pedals that I'm using very sparingly, an octave and a fuzz. And then the bulk of the sound is really coming from the Line 6 HX Stomp. You can see here that I've built a preset that has all of the things that I'm gonna use in today's video, but really I'm focusing on this Clawthorn fuzz, which is a combination of overdrive and fuzz, then into this SV amp model. So I actually have this split into two paths. Path A just gets clean bass and path B gets the fuzz overdrive combo into the cab and amp sim. Then everything is run into the Noble DI then out to the computer. And instead of trying to switch up all the bases and try to do all the things that Chris does today, I'm just going to try to do it all on my 1978 Fender Jazz. So check out how much the distortion and amp cab sim contribute to this sound. Here's the clean bass, amp and cab sim, and then the distortion. You hear you have all that grind, but you hear the clean coming through, right? And it's just a monster sound, and now we gotta dive into these tunes. So we're starting with a tune off the 1999 record Showbiz. This is a live in London performance of Philip or Philippe, depending on where you're from. And this is Chris just flexing in a power trio configuration, playing the vocal melody in the verse. Check this out. <laughs> Such a good time. I mean, come on, that big sound and playing the vocal melody in the verse. Next up, we have Bliss from the 2001 release Origin of Symmetry. This is a great example of Chris doing his thing, absolutely making this crushing, unforgettable riff that is the intro of the tune and then also sits down and supports the verse. Check it out. It's just crazy. I mean, you've got to have some serious stamina to keep up with Chris. He's a monster. Let me break this down. My favorite part right here. Let's take a moment. From that C, C minor chord, right? It's a C, the flat third, the fifth. And then chromatic from the B flat, back to the C, up to speed. Next up from Absolution, which was the record that I fell in love with, is Time Is Running Out. Spoiling, creating something beautiful. I can't 
Again, this formula of starting out a tune with the most iconic part, and then it just drops seamlessly into the verse. Here's this great part. Next up is one of the greatest rock and roll bass intros of all time. Undisputed. This is the tune that made me fall in love with Muse. Of course, it's Hysteria. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> the crowd. Drum layer. I mean, I just feel like the Kool-Aid guy. Like, I just feel like busting through a wall right now. Oh yeah, here comes Kool-Aid, here comes. So crazy, that riff, let's slow it down. I'll tell you what I've got going on for a sound too. So I'm just using that same fuzz sound, but then there is this like synth squeak above that whole thing. And I think it was played on a keyboard and sequenced in for the record, but I'm trying to do it here. So I have the old venerable electro harmonics bass micro synth here. And I've got a sound that I think gets pretty close. Like I would be comfy playing this sound for Hysteria Live, check it out. So you want this combination of the clean clack of his sound with the fuzz and amp and cab sim, then with that squeaky kind of synth thing on top. And it's just a fun experiment in layering sounds to get this like massive stadium filling bass tone. Next up is Starlight off of the 2006 release, Black Holes and Revelations. Again, Chris laying it down from the top, band coming in and just getting to live on top of his unbelievable bass part. Just sitting on that root, then starts to move here. Now look, I know that Chris plays almost everything with his fingers, but he has such an amazing, consistent attack with his fingers that sometimes it sort of sounds like a pick. So for me, this tune, I'm playing it with a pick. And in terms of sound, I'm turning on an additional fuzz just to pump up the mid-range character of this sound. So check it out, without the additional fuzz. And I'm gonna turn it on and it's gonna get just a little bit thicker in the mid-range. Helps it kind of stick out, right? Almost helps it sound a little synthier as well. And here's this great bass line. Next up, another legendary part, this swung octave figure from the 2009 release, The Resistance. This is Uprising. Oh, the way that comes in. So 
I've got the octave pedal turned on with a healthy dose of effect, but a little bit of clean signal to provide that upper octave into the fuzz combo, right? Into the fuzz, amp and cab sim. And then you get these swung octaves. this like evil demented disco sound right and in terms of technique what I'm doing is I'm just playing first finger always on the low note and then alternating playing second finger on the top note so always looks like this just say like doing this right now the consistency that Chris has is so amazing it's hard to play these quote unquote simple bass lines but make them feel and sound as good as he does now if you're saying Ian all this stuff is whizzing by too quickly you're talking about all these crazy sounds I wish someone would put together a beautiful PDF workbook that I could reference at my leisure. Well, you are in luck because the wonderful team at SBL has made a detailed workbook. It is located in the description. You click it, you download it. It's absolutely free. And while you're at it, if you have been enjoying this video or found any value in it whatsoever, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and look, I know that I've missed a million Muse tunes. <laughs> I mean, making this list killed me to get it down to 10. It absolutely killed me. So in the comments, please let me know what did I miss. Also, if there are any other bands or albums or tunes you want to see me break down, let me know. I read this stuff. I want to know what you want because I want to bring you the most value. Next up is off the 2012 release, The Second Law. Chris slapping the bass and making another iconic bass part. This is Panic Station. His sound is just so impeccable as well. Like all of the parts and sounds are so considered and intentional and well-placed and well thought out. And there is never any extraneous noodling. Like so far, I don't think this dude has played a single fill. And I'm using fill in a way of like something that sort of just takes you out of the main part he's playing. His parts are so damn strong that he never needs to break away in four or eight bar increments to play some idea because the idea is there from the top. That is right. So to get close to this amazing slap sound, I'm turning on a chorus, putting it on the channel with the amp and cab sim. So I've got channel A running clean and then channel B has the chorus and amp and cab sim. <laughs> That is a nasty, nasty groove. And I mean, impeccable part. So let's slow it down. Nice big thumb sound going straight through the string. Sliding. What I'm doing is I'm smacking the strings with my fingernail, right? Instead of popping the strings, I'm almost sort of like raking them, right? And then this, this is so nasty. This is a high risk maneuver up here. So that I'm playing down, up, down, up with my finger, almost like a, like a pick. And then muting these two strings, this is really difficult. So we have, and the rake, right. Then the A string. Come on, that's so cool, this thing. Oh, that A flat with a five, down to the G with a five below. 
Yeah. Right? Then, back to the top. Woo! Chris, man, slapping the bass. Sounds so cool, too. Like, I was so pumped to see him get a jazz bass and move into this sort of, like, funk territory on this record. Very cool. Also off of Second Law, I remember where I was when I first heard this tune. This is Madness. <laughs> Now you're like, hold on, Ian, how are we going to do a breakdown of madness? I don't have an iPad built into my bass. And it's okay. I have a sound that I've constructed in the Line 6 HX Stomp. Of course, it's not exactly the same, but it gets the spirit of it. Attack synth. Oh, attack synth for life. It's one of my favorite sounds. So I'm having to do some sneaky left hand muting here. If I just tried to play this A open really working. I really have to shut down the note with my left hand and then let it open to get this vibe. So if I play it along to the tune, to get that synthy rise. The sound is so cool to me too because we spend our lives as bass players dealing with decay of notes, right? You pluck a note and it's always just falling. The volume is falling every time. But in this sound, oh, the sound rises, right? So it's such a fun sound to play with. Next up off of the 2015 release Drones, check out this part that Chris plays in the pre-chorus of The Handler. <laughs> Just this amazing floaty melodic line that gives way to that just monster power riff in the chorus. Very cool. Check it out. Let's slow it down. The ghost notes. Next up is Thought Contagion off the 2018 release Simulation Theory. And check it out. Chris is doing a cleaner sound in the intro here and kind of wiggling the notes with this kind of like nervous vibrato all the way down the A string until the band drops in and it just gets huge. This day is said to be making a formal statement. Until then, fear has washed over London tonight. <laughs> Just another monster riff. Holy guacamole, look at this. All oh, A string, how cool is that? Okay, let me turn off the sound and I'll slow it down a little. So this is sort of how he approaches it in the intro. All of this vibrato. you could put on a sound and just all hell breaks loose. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, just one more for extra credit. It's 2022, Muse just released a brand new single called Won't Stand Down, and this just features one note with the biggest sound I have heard from this outfit yet. I feel like Chris in this is ditching the cab sim. It sounds like a disgusting, nasty, amazing, direct fuzz sound. I'm gonna play it, and then I'm gonna show you how to get it. That I would concede and let someone trample on me You strung me along, I thought I was strong But you were just gaslighting me I opened my eyes and counted the lies And now it is clearer to me You are just a user and an abuser Leaving for that one note could be so amazing and huge. I mean, right, it's about the contrast. It's about the negative space, those giant hits, and then nothing other than vocal and that light like keyboard run that's going along with the vocal just leaves room for the heaviest hits. So check it out. I am first running into that octave pedal, then into the three leaf fuzz. That's feeding into the mutant filter in the HX stomp, which is making that vocal sort of animal wow, wow sound. And then that goes into the clawthorn fuzz and I am turning off the cab sim. Check it out without the cab sim. It's this monster sound. Now, if I turn on the cab sim, it sounds more like rock and roll, right? It sounds less animal. But if you get rid of that cab sim, almost more synthy and just like disgusting. I love it. Oh, I had so much fun making this video. I love this band. I love this bass player, these sounds, these parts. I have been Ian Martin Allison for SBL, and I'll see you in the next one.